Hello students, welcome to EPG Patsala, a unique e-content development project under National Mission on Education through Information and Communication Technology. I am Kannan, working at Information and Library Network Center, Gandhinagar. The module Collection Development in Digital Library comes under the paper Digital Library. As per the Aldrich's Periodical Directory, over 3 lakhs current and active periodical available in the world. It is very difficult to acquire world content by an individual library. The librarian has the responsibility to select the appropriate resources to meet the user need. Well-planned collection development policy should be there to satisfy the need of library clientele and fulfill the organization mission. In this model, I am going to talk about digital collection, stages of digital collection development, collection development process such as identification, selection, licensing, review and renewal. The digital collection has its own issues and challenges along with the traditional library having the challenges. Let us see one by one. First, we will see the, some of the definition. As per online dictionary for library and information science, define collection development as the process of planning and building a useful balanced collection of library material over a period of years based on the ongoing assessment of information needs of the library's clientele, analysis the usage statistics and demographic projections normally constrained by budgetary limitations. The library without appropriate collection, no use. To satisfy the user demand, proper collection development policy to be defined with a consultation with the library user community, evaluation of existing library resources and etc. Overview and definition of collection development, digital collection, stages of collection development, collection development process which includes identification, selection, licensing, review and renewal. The digital collection has its own issues and challenges along with traditional collection issues and challenges. Well-planned collection development policy should be there to satisfy the needs of library clientele and fulfill the organization's mission. Overview and definition. The online dictionary for library and information science defines collection development as the process of planning and building a useful and balanced collection of library materials over a period of years based on an ongoing assessment of the information needs of the library's clientele, analysis of usage statistics and demographic projections normally constrained by budgetary limitations. As per the Ulrichs Periodics Directory, over 3 lakh current and active periodicals are available in the world. It is difficult to acquire the world's content by an individual library. The librarian has the responsibility to select the appropriate resources to meet the needs of their users. The library without an appropriate collection is of no use to satisfy the user demand. Proper collection development policy is to be defined with the consultation with the library user community, evaluation of existing library resources, etc. As per the online dictionary for library and information science, digital collection is described as a collection of library or archival materials converted to machine readable format for preservation or to provide electronic access. Also, library materials produced in electronic formats including e-zines, e-journals, e-books, reference works published, and on CD-ROM, bibliographic databases, and other web-based resources. Digital Collections The digital collections are grouped into two categories. One is born digital resources created in the library or accessed from the publisher, aggregator, academic press, etc., which includes e-journals, e-books, full-text databases, indexing and abstracting databases, reference databases, which include biographies, dictionaries, 
directories, encyclopedias, etc. Numeric and statistical databases, e-images, e-audio, and visual resources. The second category is converted from printed materials, including rare books, printed thesis and dissertations, printed articles, archived journals, etc. Converted from electronic materials such as video, audio tapes, films, microfilms, etc. Conversion from other library objects such as archival objects converted into digital objects. As I said earlier, the collection development is a crucial component of any library. The typical collection development process contains three stages. One is research stage, planning stage and execution stage. In research stage, first one is analyzing the user community. The user community should be analyzed such as what type of electronic resources needed for their curricular and research activity using usage statistics from the publishers, suggestion request from the user, feedback from the users and etc. Second, organization mission. The collection should meet the organization mission and research activity involved. Third, survey of literature. In the research stage, the librarian should make survey about various resources available to meet the user needs such as organization review about the electronic resources, consortium reviews, bibliographical databases, service provider catalog and etc. In the planning stage, the librarian should bring out collection development policy in consultation with the user community, organization and, and he has to make the policy should provide guidance to assist selector in establishing the library expectation and preferences in relation to technical feasibility, functionality and reliability, vendor support and supply. In the execution stage, based on the selection criteria defined in the collection development policy, resources will be selected to satisfy the user needs and meet the organization mission. Based on the usage statistics, deselection policy, less used and non-used resources will be removed from the collection. Collection development process. Collection development process is as follows. Identification, selection and evaluation, licensing, review and renewal. Identification. Identification refers to how existing digital resources are located and utilized. It also refers to the evaluation of existing resources based on usage statistics, research output and cost benefit analysis. Identification process for an electronic resource can be time consuming and laborious. The library must ensure that it has adequate technical infrastructure to support access or to host a resource being purchased or leased. Technical infrastructure may have to be evaluated in terms of computer platform and operating system, initial storage capacity and rate of growth, the software required to access or manage the resource, frequency of updates, network capabilities, storage and distribution media, the cost of maintenance, access limitation for multi-users or standalone users, site limitations, etc. As I said in my earlier slides, the digital collection grouped into two categories. One is bond digital, electronic resources. Another one is digitization of existing resources. In these slides, we will talk about digitization of existing resources in the library. The library is having huge valuable resources in print form such as rare books, thesis and dissertations, audio, video tag and etc. These are all not in digital format but it is very important candidate for digitization. Digitization of existing collection play a vital role in building any digital library. The selection of material to be digitized is the prime component when we consider for digitization.
the selection of digital material depends on various factors such as organization mission, the target users, the available resources, rapid usage and the physical condition of source material etc. The Harvard University Library guidelines to digitize the image and text material as follows. When we digitize the images and pages, we have to consider whether we have to go for full text or only image or both the case we have to digitize, those things we have to consider. Access source material and plan appropriate preparation, transfer, handling and disposition procedure has to be maintained. Create archival version of pages and images or full text for long term storage and production of deliverable as needed. That means we have to create two versions of the uh, digitization. One is for archival purpose, another one is another one is for distribution through online. Create deliverable for distribution as page image and full text. Next, we will see some of the benefit of digitization that is called existing uh, what is the benefit of digitized existing collection. Digital documents have more benefits compared with print documents such as simultaneous access by many user from anywhere at any time and preservation for longer duration. Digitized resources will not be damaged due to heavy or frequent usage like print resources. The other advantages of digital digitization include immediate access to high demand and frequent usage items, rapid access to material held remotely, easy to reinstate out of print material. It is very potential to display material that are inaccessible format. For example, large volume or maps, it is very difficult to access. If you digitize and put it in the electronic format, it is easy to access by the different users simultaneously. Also, it is cons conserve fragile and precious originals in digitized format that will help the user to access the material at any time from anywhere. The last component of collection development process is called a review and a renewal of resources. The rapid changes in the electronic resources and usage pattern. The library or the consortium frequently review the user needs and accordingly renew the subscription so that our nation continually get the relevant information for their research needs. The electronic resources subscribed from various publishers and by various pricing model. The supplier should notify to the library about renewal date at least one month in advance. It is important to consider following based on the statistics and analysis report. Whether the concerned resources relevant to the library user, usage strengths, how the particular resource is used, compare with the other product. Suppose the same resources available with other vendors what is the price rate, value for money, whether whatever we have purchased from this vendor, whether it is utilized properly by the users, that is called value for money, training and documentation provided by the publishers, whether the publisher have provided proper documentation uh, to help the user to access the resources, changes in access provisions, etc. These are the things to be reviewed to renew any electronic resources from the consortia point of view or an individual library. Content and scope. The electronic resources initially evaluated on the content perspective is the same as print resources. The electronic resource must support the research needs of the organization. The resource should add depth to the existing collection with added features such as hyperfine to other resources multimedia integration. Information must be current 
and updated regularly along with the print counterparts the resources should come from an established and reputed author publisher with peer and professionally reviewed accuracy and completeness as compared with print format this means that the electronic resource should have all the articles illustrations graphs and tables as they appear in the print counterpart functionality and reliability the structure and logical arrangement of the content should be in such a way that the user could navigate to the pertinent information with a few clicks to assess the functionality and reliability of the e resources the library should evaluate the following the interface should be user friendly such as introductory screens online tutorials context sensitive help and pop-ups and menus are to be provided by the publisher the search and retrieval software must be powerful and flexible some features that should be available include keyword and boolean searching full text searching truncation browsing that is by index and title relevancy ranking thesaurus and search history the system should support multiple export options such as email printing and downloading and a provision of citation downloads should be incorporated into the citation management software the system should provide access to other electronic resources and support the resource integration via reference and full text linking technical support the electronic resources can be intimidating and difficult for a first time user proper training is to be provided to the user so that the electronic resources will be used effectively the following criteria are to be considered to assess electronic resources number 1 method of access the publisher should provide web based access to connect with the remote host as compared to the local host or the mount it enhances the usage of electronic resources provides faster access and lesser burdens such as storage preservation and maintenance authentication the publisher should provide access via ip filtering so that more number of users could access it simultaneously ip address authentication should be supported it enables the user to access the resources using a proxy server from multiple locations compatibility resources should be compatible with the existing system available within the library such as operating system hardware and software content format is to be considered each format such as html xml pdf have their own positives and negatives xml is the most desirable format which does not require any software to be installed and convergence with big files vendor support the vendor should have a prior experience with academic institutions to provide electronic resources the reputation of the vendor technical and user support are also to be considered it is useful to determine the range of vendor support service available including trial evaluation and product demonstration the vendor should provide the resources as a trial for a certain period and should also provide demonstration to use the electronic resources user training and support the vendor should provide training to the users with proper documentation and also support ongoing training for the access period technical support the vendor should have the capability to provide resolution to the technical issues support should be timely professional and effective data security and archiving the vendor's approach on data back frequency and the format are to be considered in case the vendor decides to liquidate how the resources will be accessed and the library's capacity to manage resources locally are also important consideration is also to be given on whether the backup data is compliant with lockss or any other alternative for archival purposes the vendor should be able to provide bibliographic data in a preferred format so that the burden will be reduced to develop local bibliographic database
Statistical reporting. The quality and availability of statistical data is important to evaluate the usage of resources and analyze the cost effectiveness. This will help the library for decision making during renewal or deselection. Purchase pricing model. The vendor should offer a choice of pricing models from which the libraries may select. These models could be based on various criteria, including the number of simultaneous users and user population. Pricing models that are based on full time equivalent, FTE. It should be based on the size of the actual user group and not the total user population. The vendor should be prepared to offer other pricing models such as pay per use pricing, packaged pricing, consortia pricing, back files, archiving, and post termination rights. The purchasing or leasing of electronic data should include a provision for perpetual access to that data. Licensing consideration. Most electronic resources are licensed to the subscribing institutions with a written agreement that contains detailed explanation about the user's rights and restrictions on usage. E-resources are leased or made accessible on annual payment and are not sold. Therefore, Libraries do not own the material in a digital environment. Instead, they license or lease the access of digital material on behalf of their users for a defined period of time and under certain terms and conditions usually defined by the publishers in their license agreements. It is therefore necessary that the librarian should have a full understanding of the terms of the license agreement before selecting the electronic resources. Access concern. Authorized users and authorized sites should be defined as broadly as possible. Authorized users should be permitted to access the electronic resource from anywhere via the organization's secure network. Access should be permitted via IP authentication for the entire institution, including simultaneous access for multiple users. Use of the electronic resources. The license should permit fair use of all information for non-commercial, educational, instructional, and research purposes by the libraries and authorized users. These include viewing, downloading, ILL, e-reserves, and course packs. Flexibility and enhancement. Consideration needs to be given to the terms and conditions around cancellation. This might be cancelling a bundled deal and moving to selected content or moving to outright cancellation or cancellation of a linked print product. Models that impose a no print cancellation clause or impose limits on the number of titles or financial penalties should be avoided. Legal issue. The following legal issue should be addressed in any licensing agreement with an organization sign. The consortium should consult with the legal authorities before any license agreement. The license agreement should not restrict any legal rights of the organization or consortium according to the governing laws of the organization or consortium. Review and Renewal Due to rapid changes in the electronic resources and usage pattern, the library or the consortium frequently should review the user need and accordingly renew the subscription so that the organization continues to get the relevant information for their research needs. The electronic resources are subscribed from various publishers following various pricing models. The supplier should notify to the library about the renewal date at least one month in advance. The library should review the available usage statistics to help to determine if the use of the resource when considered alongside the associated costs, justifies the retention and renewal of the resource. It is important to consider the following based on the statistics and analysis. Relevance to the library user, usage trends, comparable with other products, value for money, training and documentation provided by the publishers, and change in access provision, etc. In this model, 
we have elaborately discussed about the basic definition of collection development and digital collection various stages of collection development among other things you have learned about various collection development processes such as identification selection and evaluation licensing review and renewal we hope that this module imparted knowledge on various selection criteria pertaining to electronic resources dear student collection development is a important component of any library whether it is a digital or traditional library in this module i discussed about basic definition of collection development and digital collection various stages of collection development and etc you also learn about various collection development process such as identification of electronic resources as well as digitization resources selection and evaluation whereas we discussed about selection of electronic resources from the publishers as well as selection of existing resources from the library and evaluate them based on the users needs then licensing pattern various a licensing pattern which are the way the library could access the resources then review and renewal why it is important that review and renewal based on the review we can provide the proper resources to the research group as well as users community in the library or in the consortium users i hope this module impart knowledge on various selection criteria particularly electronic resources thank you